Good Sunday evening, church family. I uh, just wanted to come and continue our study on Sunday nights as we're looking at the Psalms. We're trying to to connect with the Psalms better. How, how can we learn and apply these things to our lives today? And so last week we were talking about Psalm 77. You remember Psalm 77 is a psalm uh, attributed to Asaph. Asaph was one of the members of the tribe of Levi whom David put in charge of the worship at the tabernacle. You can go back to 1 Chronicles chapter 6 and read about that in verse 39. What we learn or see about Asaph is, is something interesting. He was one who was pretty straightforward. Uh, he was honest. Asaph really writes his emotions while uh, dealing with what he's going through, dealing with his problems. And as we read about his situation, uh, it should help us relate to those feelings that he has because they're the same feelings that we have from time to time. And so in Psalm 77, Asaph is going through a crisis once again. And we're going to read about how he deals with that situation. As we looked at last week, we talked about the first couple of verses. We see how he cries in the night. He begins the psalm by recording how he was crying out to the Lord. And so these first couple of verses describe how Asaph was seeking after the Lord in the midst of his crisis, in the midst of his turmoil. And so he is literally crying to God for help. And so in this you can see that he is emotionally broken and, and spent. He is in distress as he's reaching out to God for help. And in this it seems like nothing can, can be said to Asaph that's going to console him, that's going to make him feel better. Uh, the, the ordeal that he's going through seems to be something that is so great and it's just impossible for him at this moment uh, to find comfort. And we don't know specifically what he's enduring. Uh, but we can certainly see that he is uh, trying to find comfort and he doesn't see it at that moment. But then as we move to verses 3 and 6, we see something interesting. Again, yeah, something that we tend to do, but he starts remembering the good old days. Verse 3 through 6 seems to be Asaph thinking about and recalling what, again, were days of old. The, the good old days, as we sometimes say. In verse 5, Asaph says, I thought about the former, former days. Uh, the year of long ago, I remembered my songs in the night. And so he's thinking back at this point. He's remembering uh, the pleasures before the things as he could sing these songs at nights and how things uh, seem so much better. But again, what we uh, tend to do when we're going through difficult times, you remember when. But, but now Asaph has tears and distress in the night. Verses 7 through 9 of Psalm 77 records uh, the feelings probably of every uh, person in the middle of a difficult situation. And Asaph records these things. These feelings uh, come about in, a, in six questions uh, in which he is looking for answers. And the questions are rhetorical, but the questions are, you know, will the Lord reject me forever? Uh, will He ever uh, or never show His favor again? Uh, he asks, is, is his unfailing love, is it, is it vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? He asks, has God forgotten uh, to be merciful? Uh, he even asks, you know, is, has, has he in anger withheld his compassion from him? And so he's going through all of these emotions. Again, we can relate. You know, as we go through trials and difficulties, uh, we tend to go through this cycle of emotions. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's, uh, we've already seen how he is crying out to the Lord physically. He is reaching out, crying out to Him. Uh, we see how he's thinking about days of old. Uh, now he's going through this, this uh, part of, to where he's asking questions. Well, what have I done? What's going on? Is it my fault? Uh, will God keep His uh, mercy from me? All these questions. But then you come to verses 10 uh, through 12. And we find verses 10 through 12, Asaph records uh, his determination in the midst of this difficulty. Uh, there are, are three things that, that Asaph says that he is going to do. One of those things was he was going to remember the deeds of the Lord. Now we understand, and as we'll talk about, we should certainly at all times remember the, the things that God has done for us. But Asaph says, I'm going to remember the deeds of the Lord. The second thing he says is, he said, I'm going to remember the miracles. Now, 
remembering the miracles of God, remembering the things the, that God has done, those things that are, are so uh, amazing and cause us to be awestruck, uh, remind us of who God is. Remind us of His power and His glory. And re just remind us of the nature of God. And then the third thing he said, he says, I'm going to meditate on all of, of God's works and consider all God's mighty deeds. Now, these three, they, they tend to, to join together in, in what he says he's going to do. So those are the things we looked at last time. Now, let's move forward to the rest of the psalm and see how this plays out. See what Asaph uh, does as he says he's going to to remember God in in these things. Look at verses thirteen through fifteen of Psalm seventy seven, beginning of verse thirteen. Your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people. He says. You know, to endure his suffering, Asaph now thinks back or he recounts the, the, the attributes of God. By thinking about God rather than himself, what he is able to do is he's, he's now able to properly center himself to get through this distress. Now, again, we can relate, can't we? We can see how this is so essential for us as we go through distress, as we go through trials, you know, we've got to get our bearings about us. We've got to, to focus. We've got to center ourselves properly on God in, or, in, in, in order to get through whatever it is that we're going through. And so, again, to endure his suffering, Asaph, he's going to think about who God is. And one of the things he acknowledges or remembers is that God's ways are holy. Now, we have to remember that holiness is not simply about purity, but it's about how God is separated from everything else. Therefore, we are not simply talking about how God's ways are righteous. Asaph is asking us who we are to question God because His ways are, are completely different than, than our ways of thinking. Who are we to question the ways of, of God? Who are we to declare that we should not have to go through a trial? Uh, who are we to say that, that we have learned the lesson of the trial and our, and our faith has, has been refined? You know, our ways are simply not the ways of God. God knows what we need. God has promised that, that we won't be tested beyond what we are capable of enduring, 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. And so, again, he is acknowledging that God's ways are, are set apart. God's ways are holy. Another thing that he mentions is that God's greatness, uh, you can't compare it. Uh, God's greatness is incomparable. God is able to put his holy ways into action. And God has the power to, to accomplish his ways. God's purposes will be accomplished you know, we, we don't have control over our own lives. We like to think we do, uh, but we don't have control over our own lives and, and cannot always accomplish our, our purposes. But God does. God does have control over our lives, and God does have the power far above all else to help us in our distress. And then a third thing is that God's power is visible. You know, it's easy to forget about the power of God because... A lot of times what we do is we close our eyes to all that God has done. We forget God's power in creation. You know, we take for granted as we just look out in, in nature to realize that this all came about because of the power of, of God. We forget about God's power in salvation. You know, you think about what God has done for us through Jesus. How amazing and powerful that is to bring us back into relationship with Him by giving His only Son as that sacrifice. Is that atonement? You know, we forget about God's power to change lives. We forget about how God's power has been at work in our lives to make us better people than we were before. You see, what we have to do and what Asaph was doing was remembering God's power. You know, see it. Know it's there. It's not something that's invisible. And then the fourth thing is 
that you think about or you remember, in order to get through this distress, God's work is Redeemer. You know, Asaph also remembers how God redeemed his people. Now, this is a remembrance of, of the ex Exodus, one of the earliest times that we read about the need of redemption or need for redemption in, in the Exodus and the Passover, which spared the firstborn of Israel. You remember all the firstborn were to die. God had redeemed or, or, or bought back the firstborn from the dead. Israel had been delivered from Egyptian slavery and the firstborn had been spared death. You know, how much more can we bring this to remembrance when we're going through something? You know, God has worked great things as our Redeemer. He's delivered us from the slavery of sin. He's purchased us from death that was owed to us for our sins. 1 Peter 1 verses 18 and 19 says, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers. He said, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Now, we have to remember that God has done so much for us in redeeming our lives. And we need to stay focused on, on what really matters. God's spiritual blessings and spiritual workings for us. Remember those things. But now let's look at uh, verses 16 uh, through 19. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you. They were afraid. The depths also trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies sent out a sound. Your arrows also flashed about. Verse 18, the voice of your thunder was in the world when the lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea, your path in the great waters, and your footsteps were not known. Now, here Asaph is, is thinking about remembering God as his Redeemer. Uh, it, it causes him to, to think about the great acts of God in redeeming Israel from Egyptian slavery. Uh, he's thinking about the Redeemer of the Exodus. And in verse 16, Asaph recorded the, the mighty working of God to, to part the waters for deliverance for the Egyptians. In verses 17 and 18, they seem to remind Israel about that pillar of cloud and fire that led the people to deliverance, as well as protected the people from the Egyptians as they, as they crossed the Red Sea. God was leading the people through that trial. God was, was with them through this whole event. Even though the people did panic, believing that they were about to die, God does not leave us to cope with our suffering alone, but He leads to the light at the end of the tunnel. And then look at verse 20. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. You know, one thing you look at when you read verse 20 or reminds you of is, is likely David's psalm. Because as Asaph concludes his psalm speaking of, of God as shepherd who leads his people by his servants, one of the favorite images that God uses to picture his relationship with us is that of a shepherd. You know, the, the picture is that God is in charge and we're supposed to, to follow him. And again, one cannot help think of, but think of David's famous Psalm 23, which speaks of going through the valley of the shadow of death, but God still leading us. You know, we're going to go through difficult times. We're going through some difficult times right now. We will go through frightening times, but God is still leading us to the pasture. God is still walking in front of us, protecting us from danger. So, what are the applications from Psalm 77? Well, when in distress, remember. <laughs> when you're in distress, when you're going through these things, remember. Remember all of God's mighty deeds in your life. You know, remember those things that He's done for you. Think back. Don't block those out. Don't be blinded by what's going on now. Remember. Remember the attributes of God. You know, remember that His ways are not our ways, and God has the power to accomplish His purpose. Remember that God has redeemed you. He's redeemed you by the precious blood of His Son. He's not going to leave you alone. He, he's, he's not going to leave you alone when He has done so much to give you the opportunity to be with Him forever. And so, 
let's connect with this psalm of Asaph. And always know that we can have confidence in crisis because of an almighty, ever-present God who cares. I hope our study tonight has been beneficial. I hope you'll continue to study the Psalms. And I hope to see you soon because I miss you so much. May God bless you.